Hello and welcome to Weekly MTG. I'm your host, Blake Rasmussen, and we're doing that fun thing today. We're opening Wilds of Eldraine product. I have some collector boosters, set boosters, draft boosters, the whole shebang, uh, or most of the shebang anyway. And uh, we're going to spend most of this show opening product, seeing what cool stuff we get, talking about where you can get what product. Uh, the pre-release was this past weekend, so you may have already picked them up and opened up some cool stuff. But if not, Wilds of Eldraine releases globally this Friday, so you'll be able to pick it up at your local game store. But before we get to that stuff, we've got something else fun for you, especially if you're a fan of the Magic Story podcast hosted by Harless and Natalie, who are here with us. There we are. Welcome. Hey, Blake. So they just have some quick news they want to share with you all about what's going on with the Magic Story Podcast. So take it away. Yeah, hi all. It's Natalie from the Magic Story Podcast. We just wanted to announce that we are officially back for Season 5, covering the story of Wilds of Eldraine. Season 5 starts next Monday, September 11th, and we will continue our typical every Monday cadence through the entirety of the Wilds of Eldraine story. And stay tuned for more from us because we're going beyond Wilds of Eldraine too. Thank you so much to the Magic community out there who has listened, reviewed, and engaged with us since March and we relaunched the Magic Story podcast. Your passion for Magic Story is heard and we appreciate each and every one of you. We journey through the whole Phyrexian arc together and we have many more stories and magic to tell. So I'm excited to say that the best podcast episodes still have yet to come. And with that, I'm handing it over to Harless for our second bit of very exciting news. Harless? Hey, y'all. I am so excited about this next piece of news. So you may have seen this online, but we are going to be hosting a live podcast recording of the Magic Story podcast at MagicCon Vegas. We're going to be on the main stage on Saturday at 1230. And if you're planning on attending the con, we would love for you to come say hi while we're there. We're going to be there all weekend. And if not, don't worry, because we are also going to be publishing that recording as a podcast episode in October. So that's all from us. And thank you, Blake. Back to you. Yeah, real quick, before, Thanks, I, let, before I let you go, uh, if someone hasn't listened to the Magic Story podcast before and they're intrigued and they want to listen to it, what are the best ways to do that? Yeah, we're on pretty much every podcast platform. So Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, pretty much anywhere you can listen to a podcast, we are on it. All right, just search for Magic Story Podcast and there it'll be. All right, thanks you two. Uh, before we get to the opening, I have one more bit of news because the Secret Layer Fall Super Drop is going on right now at magicsecretlayer.com. Those are all of the various creative artistic treatments uh, for cards, the different drops you can get. My my personal favorites, big fan of the VHS one up at the top, almost entirely because of Rewind. And then the baseball cards, which brings me back to my, my youth. The baseball card for the lower one five is pretty fantastic, if I don't say so myself. Anyway, head to magicsecretlayer.com. That sale is going on right now. All right, now, as Ice Prophet, a true prophet in the chat says, I am ready to rip some packs. Uh, so we're going to do that. And uh, I'm going to start, of course, as usual with collector boosters. But you can see here we have draft set boosters. Uh, we're going to be just chatting and hanging out the whole time we're doing this. So if you have questions, uh, the camera's a little on my right. So we're going to, you'll get my good side for most of this stream. But if you have questions, feel free to throw them in chat and we'll talk about it. But we'll go through the slots. If I can ever get this open, there we go. Headphones. I can take my headphones off. That's right. Sweet. All right. And yeah, so if you have questions, put them in chat. We'll talk about them. We'll talk about the different slots, what it looks like to open these. So uh, no box toppers or anything in uh, this one for Wilds of Eldraine, but plenty of goodness inside. So these are collector boosters. So we'll spend our time going through the slots early on, looking at the different treatments, and then we'll go a little faster as we get through some of these. Assuming, I my, apparently my hands don't work this morning. All right, so we're gonna go backwards through this because I'm pretty sure, yep, there we go. Okay, so I'm working from the back. 
Uh, these particular packs have the, the rares up here, but thankfully it's token signing it. So, all right, you're going to start out with four foil commons. So, traditional foil, normal deal. There's a freeze in place. I like the way the ice shines. Great. All right, so we're going to go four foil commons. We've got a freeze in place, scarecrow guide, voracious vermin, and Johan's stopgap. Then we've got uncommons. So here's a Shrouded Shepherd. Again, traditional foil. So we get three uncommons. One, two, three. Totentons. Fascinating. I, I took German in high school. I love that name. All right. And then you hit your land. So these are, so these are gorgeous. And if you don't know the story behind these, we talked about this art. These are actual images of shadow boxes. So um, someone physically made this in a little box and they light it from behind and it's amazing. And that's what this art is. It's not a painting. It is not digital art. Um, someone physically made that. All right, next up. So now we get non-foil uncommon enchanting tales these in a growth and then we're going to get so it's uh you get two uncommon enchanting tales one's foil one's non-foil compulsion compulsion's a good throwback for me i love compulsion okay then we're moving into traditional foil rare mythic so this is a rare mythic from the main set in the traditional foil. Then we hit uh, traditional foil or non-foil extended art, rare or mythic. So most of the time this is going to be non-foil. And, uh, oh wait, did I get those slots mixed up? Non-foil showcase, no, okay. So that's gonna be the um, commander slot extended. And then we're gonna hit, then you get a non-foil showcase or borderless, in this case, an elusive otter in the showcase frame. And then a non-foil Enchanting Tales, Rare Mythic, Suppression. And then the final slot, which I always call the fancy slot. In this case, it is a traditional foil or alt frame or confetti foil Enchanting Tales. Basically, you'll get some foil, rare, or mythic in one of the special foil treatments. Oh, i got to do this to get Beseech. In this case, we have an extended foil beseech. So we'll see some of that variety as we go through and do the packs. Yeah, I love the Enchanting Tales as well. I'm a big fan of whenever we do bonus sheets, Strixhaven and Brothers War are two of my favorite sets. All right, so, all right, back to the next pack. We've got common two, three, or I'm not going to spend much time on the commons or uncommons. I love having them. There's definitely some good ones. I like this art too. I say I'm not going to spend much time and then I'm like, ooh, pretty. Yeah, that Tempest Heart pops in foil. Welcome to Sweet Tooth. And then High Fey Negotiator. And then I love this. I mean, I'm an islands kind of guy, but um, this island in particular. Again, that is a shadow box. It's incredible. Like, I... That kind of art is so beyond me. All right. And then, non-foil Enchanting Tales, Raid Bombardment. And then, foil Enchanting Tales, Impact Tremor. So again, these are going to be uncommons in these two slots up here. When we get down here, rares or mythics, this one can also be enchanting tales. All right, so then we have a main set rare or mythic, 
traditional foil. Extended from the commander set. Relish Archivist. So that's this slot here. Can be foil, mostly is not. And then non-foil, one of the special frames. So here, so here you can see some of that variety um, for this slot in particular. So we've got the adventure frame and then the borderless frame for the lands. Restless Spire. This is probably my favorite art in the set. Looks fantastic. And then Rare Mythic Enchanting Tales. We got Kindred Discovery. Now I have to figure out yeah, if that one goes in my Dragon's deck or not. And then the final, here's the, here's the token. I'll do that for the fancy slot. Food. Elemental. That elemental's also gorgeous. And then the fi final slot. Oh, that is a Parallel Lives. So it's foil. This is not the confetti foil version. So that is a traditional foil anime. Parallel Lives. So again, you're going to see some of that variety in this bottom slot, or in this last slot here. It can be a lot of, lot of things there. But yeah. Foil Anime Parallel Lives. Last slot. Yeah, it's gorgeous. All right. Let's keep going. You know, there is some freedom in, in just enjoying the ride when you open a pack. Um, but if you're the kind who wants to know exactly what's in the pack, you can head to dailymtg.com and just see, take a look at the Collecting Wilds of Eldraine article which has all the detailed information in it. All of the available cards. This card, by the way, so we had our employee pre-release on Thursday of last week, and I had a sweet blue-green deck. Um, I had two, uh, the plural I guess would be mother's geese, I don't know, uh, two goose mothers in my deck, and my deck was sick. But this card, so much for two mana. It's one tough cookie. <laughs> All right, back Your to seconds. My deck was gross. Thanks, Producer Sean. Um, it was really good. This card is great. Thanks for sharing, Steve. All right. God, and you know, I, I said that island art was great, but man, this, this planes art is great. All of these shadow box lands really are fantastic, especially in foil. Blows my mind that people can do that. All right, and then Garrick's Uprising in non-foil. It is, I, it doesn't happen often, but I will, I will flag before it happens. Stuff. It is possible to get these two cards the same, the foil and non-foil. Yep, Curiosity. I did have that happen in a practice pack. Yenna, Red Tooth Regent. Again, main set foil. Then we come to the Commander Extended slot. Most of the time it's going to be non-foil, but it can be foil. And then non-foil fancy slot. By friend of the show, Elena Danner. Bramble Familiar. Then we have Rare Mythic Enchanting Tales. Here we have Fiery Emancipation. And Token before the fancy slot. Bird. Food. All right. Foil fancy slot is Pollen Shield Hair. So that is a foil adventure in Rare Mythic. All right. Let's keep going. So we'll get through this collector booster box, and then we will. Then I'll leave it up to you all. If you want to open draft or set boosters, if you have specific questions, want to see certain things about different packs, etc. All right, I love this food. 
All right, so let's look at, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Again, the land's gorgeous. I think we already saw that one. Um, okay, chanting tails, spreading seas. their tutelage and then foil rare mythic from the set Ariette of the charmed apple charming scoundrel yeah set boosters if, if you want multiple rares per pack are uh, after collector boosters obviously which have the most rares per pack um, but set boosters have um, more rares per pack on average. They're great. And then Sanguine Bond. I love that art too. And then there's a token, treasure, mm. food. And then finally the uh, foil fancy slot. So again, this it can include commander cards as well, which this is a great example of Elvish Archivist. Again, showing the variety in that final slot of the different treatments you can get. What's the best box to get if you really just want to collect the Enchanting Tales? Uh, collect your boosters, by far. Uh, as you can see, you get at least three per collector booster, and then you can get more. It is also the only place to get the uh, confetti foil. So if you want the confetti foil versions of the Wilds of Eldraine ones, those I believe, let me double check this as I say it. Uh, our confetti foils are only in collector boosters. So you can get Enchanting Tales elsewhere. Um, but yeah, collector boosters by far have the most enchanting Tales cards, if that's what you're looking for. You'll get at least three, up to four per pack. All right, commons, 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 uncommons, 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 and there's that fantastic island again. And we get some ground seal. Back in my day, that was a rare. Foil grasp of fate. Love the concept on that one too. All right, we got foil Italian's messenger. Agatha's soul cauldron. I do want to point out down here. So this extended slot, we've been hitting commander cards. Uh, which is a lot of what you'll get, but um, this is a main set rare, um, as is Agatha's Soul Cauldron. So it's not just commander cards in that slot. I think I might have misspoken on that earlier. Just pointing that out. Um, and then Booster Fun, non foil, twinning twins. Poor air elemental. And oh, okay, so this is a good example. So you can also, in this non foil slot, get the anime versions of the Enchanting Tales, which is this for Aggravated Assault. It is non foil. But you can get the anime versions there. And then, last one, Yenna Red Tooth Regent in hold that up, extended foil. Uh, what's the rarity between normal Enchanting Tales and the anime version? Um, so that sort of detail, I'm going to defer to the collecting article. It is, let's see, it's going to vary a little bit across the packs and the different slots. But if you're just talking, about, let's just talk about this slot right here. 73.3% um, of the time it's going to be an Enchanting Tales rare. 10% uh, of the time it's going to be an Enchanting Tales Mythic Rare. 6.7% of the time it's going to be an Enchanting Tales Anime Rare. So that's what this is. So 6.7%. And then 
10% of the time, it's going to be a, an anime mythic rare. And that's, you actually have a higher percent chance of getting an anime mythic rare than a rare, only because there are more mythic rares. So there are 10, sorry, 15 anime borderless mythic rares and only five rares that got that treatment. So uh, those exact numbers are in the collecting article. Uh, and so you can definitely pull those out to see exactly what the different ratios are for the different treatments. But I had the article up, so I'll read it to you. Uh, let's see, will we see typal decks get stronger in modern and legacy? Um, typal decks, as a con, uh, so there's two different questions in there. There's as a concept versus, um, so like will we see more typal decks of any type in the modern and or legacy metagame? Or will individual archetypes get better? Like will goblins get better? Will merfolk get better? The answer to the second question is, is Generally, yes, the typal archetypes tend to get better over time as more get added to them. For example, Merfolk is a sort of fringe tier three-ish maybe strategy in modern. Um, can, can win every once in a while, but doesn't put up consistent results, doesn't get played a ton. Um, people love the deck, but, um, you know, We'll point out that Lost Caverns of Ixalan is a uh, merfolk set. So there may be some merfolk in there. I don't know if any particularly will help legacy or modern merfolk, but um, those sort of typal strategies tend to be sort of boom or bust based on whether a set has cards for it uh, or are fo focused on that type. So that is sort of the long-winded answer to that question. Uh, keep these in order as I fumble through them. Oh, foil season of growth. Looks great. Can we get some clerics? You know, I have a I have a cleric deck myself, so there are sneaky clerics in every set. Um, I, that deck consistently gets new cards. Cleric, especially after um, we started doing Dungeons and Dragons sets, Cleric started popping up more often. So I would keep a lookout for Clerics in every set. I, I've been adding to that deck literally every set. Ooh, Leyland of Anticipation. Sean, was that an audible gasp? Yeah, you, you want it? Here, I'll set that aside. I'll set that aside for Sean. Um, and then here we are. Foil non-anime, Dawn of Hope. For the foil slot at the end there. So yeah, clerics, clerics I would keep an eye out. I, I seem to add a card or two almost every set to that deck. Which makes it difficult because that deck was already pretty full. Dibs on the, sorry, producer Sean has dibs on that ley line. He, he audibly gasped. I, I don't know if, I doubt any of you could hear it, but he audibly gasped when I opened it. It is, it is really pretty. Uh, what is the rarity of the Walking Dead list reprints? We should open, we should definitely move to set boosters after that for that very reason. Um, it is in the article. I'll pull it up in a moment. Here, Forest. I think that one's new. I don't think we've opened that one before. And again, gorgeous effect. And I'll just keep saying how I'm just blown away that these are not paintings or digital art. This is somebody cut that out. And I, I think they make all their own materials too. Like, just insane what some people are capable of. Tangible Virtue, Griffin Arian. And then Foil Rare Mythic, 
What's their time? 10.25. Regal Bunny Corn. Throne of Eldraine. Ah, they said the thing. They said the thing. That's going to go in that mono white deck of mine. <laughs> All right. Horned Lock Whale, also known as Control Finisher. Dot Blue. All right. Enchanting Tales. We got a Karmic Justice. Love that. Concept on that one's great as well. And then, ooh, Foil Ristic Study. This is not Confetti Foil. Um, but it is foil and gorgeous. All right, keep going. That's the name of the movie. Yes, it is. the The lands are not a painting. Um, it's a shadow box, and I'm not going to do it justice. But we had um, one of the ads on the show. God, was it the the show after the debut talking about it um, so if you head back a couple episodes I think two episodes ago they describe it in detail four one two three and then we land, we got another island, and then we get Dragon Mantle. I looked at this one like a little cross-eyed when I first saw it was on this list, and then I realized how many things this adds to the set, because it's another aura for all your bargain, it draws a card and replaces itself, and then it also fits into the red-green, like, four power matters archetype. Just a, just a great addition. That's why I don't design the games, I just talk about them. Powering Sugar Maw. Okay, so here is an example. So I talked about the fact that you can get a foil in this lot. No foil so far. This is a foil Court of Ardenvale. And again, that is this slot here. You can get foils in that extended slot. Uh, in the past, we've had a dedicated foil extended slot in some sets. Uh, they were combined in this one because there's just so much good stuff. All right. And then here, Scalding Viper on my list, which I need to complete, of top um, Canadian Highlander cards out of the set. Last set, I did a top five. This set, I am very easily hitting 10. So yay for all us Canadian Highlander fans out there. And then there is a Charming Scoundrel. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right. All right, we got three more of these, and then let's get ooh, four more of these. I'm going to try to go a little fast because I want to leave enough time to do set and draft boosters as well. Maybe do a little pack one, pick one. So let's do one, two, three, four, one. That edge, oh, God, see, i got to stop, though, because that edge wall in is... Cool card and also really pretty. Three, and then I'll stop again on the land because I don't think we've seen a swamp yet. Again, someone made that with their hands. Two people, actually. Their names are on the card. All right. Nightly Valor. Foil Hatching Plans, another really clever addition to this set with all the bargaining. Foil Agatha's Soul Cauldron. The Goose Mother. This card's so good and limited. It, it very well is good in Constructed as well, but I had two of them in my pre release deck, and so that's where my head's at right now. Gumdrop Poisoner. Strong card. On my maybe list for Canadian Highlander. I'm not sure. We got a Primal Vigor. It's a pretty sweet Enchanting Tales. And for the foil fancy slot, we got some asinine antics. All right. Okay. 
get through three more of these real quick. We'll do set boosters and draft boosters. All right, one quick study. Divination. Divination was was due for a slight upgrade. Ash, Party Crasher, one of the more clever names in the set. All right, Stab Wound. Boil Raid Bombardment. Boil Extraordinary Journey. Ogre Chitterlord, also known as Rat Titan. Questing Druid, also on my list for uh, possible Canadian Highlander cards. Adventure cards rank pretty highly, um, being two cards in one. Oh, there we are. Non-foil Bitter Blossom. Oh, Sean, should we, should we upgrade you? Let's, up, let's upgrade producer Sean Wool. So that, that goes over here, foil fancy slot, but it's going over here in the Sean gets this pile. All right. But I, I got I got to show that again today because it's it's really pretty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Would have loved to see Dragon Tempest on there. That card deserves some art love. That card does deserve some art love. I'm sure someone on the secret layer team is listening right now. All right. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, uh, forest we've seen, Utopia Sprawl, love that addition, love that it's an uncommon, Garrick's Uprising, Foil, Sentinel of Lost Lore, seems potentially powerful, also it's an elf, also it's a knight, all right, Lord Skitter, Sewer King, Restless Fortress, in the Extended, We got Fraying Sanity. Foil Fancy Slot. Devouring Sugar Maw. Lot that's a saw someone playing a fight rigging deck with that the other day, and there are a lot of cheap creatures that have six power and a drawback in the format right now. Lots of lots of fight rigging going on. Alright. Last one of these. One two, three, four, one, two. Also, this card's sneaky good. Uh, there are a lot of cards which have a mana value five or greater, but very rarely actually cost five. And it replaces itself when it comes in. Don't sleep on that card. All right, oop, Ted Ratter. Planes. We got an Impact Tremors. Foil Utopia Sprawl. My Enchantress deck just got an upgrade. Where Fox Bodyguard. Imodane the Pyro Hammer. Ooh, Rowan. Sweet. Forced Fruition. And finally, Barrel Encounter. All right, let's do some set and draft boosters. Otter Wizard. At pre-release, I beat a Bitter Blossom on turn two on the draw. So my favorite limited draft story with Bitter Blossom is that uh, when Lorwyn came out, I was doing a draft at my local game store, uh, which also happened to be the local game store of one Bill Stark. Um, you may or may not know who Bill Stark is, longtime Wizards employee, he doesn't work here anymore, um, but still active in the Magic community. We're, we're going to do set boosters. Um, 
and he told the story the other day as well. Um, but basically, Lorwyn draft. Um, no one really knew what cards were good in the set yet was, or how good Bitter Blossom was, but it looked insane to me. And so when Bill Stark passed me two of them, I very easily won that draft. Because I got passed two Bitter Blossoms. All right. Wilds of Eldraine set boosters. Make sure I have all my notes over here so I don't say anything wrong. Set boosters are, of course, the best um, pack to open. Out of, if, you're, if you're looking to just crack packs, well, collector boosters are the best. They're, they're great, but they are at a different price point. So um, if you're looking at the lower price point, set boosters are better for cracking than draft boosters. They tend to have more rares. And um, you also have the list, uh, guaranteed foil, and you'll get the cool art card. So, a lot going on here. Uh, and again, this is this card has a card from the list. Um, so, art card. Some of these will come with a gold signature. The gold signature ones are rare. I think it's something like 10% um, of packs. There you go. 10% come with the stamp. All right. So, here's also where you get basic lands from the set. Then we got some commons. And when I say some, I mean three. And then you get three uncommons. Oop. Did that wrong. Three uncommons. There we go. Two. Three. And then the rear. Court of Garenbrig. So that, I believe, is the wild card slot. There's these two wild card slots, and then Chanting Tales, and your foil. And then this is actually a card from the list. So this is not one of the universes within versions of the Walking Dead cards. This is a card from the list. All right, and let's, we'll, we'll open some set boosters to get a sense of all of this. But again, you'll notice that this pack came with three rares. So set boosters uh, are the ones that are going to have more rares per pack on average. All right, so art card, horn lock whale. And you can also, like the cool, cool things on these, so you'll see they have the name of the set, the artist, uh, and then they'll also say what number out of how many art cards they are. All right, so basic land, common, 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 uncommon, 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 another uncommon. So what's happening here with the commons and uncommons is there are two wild card slots. So there's three commons guaranteed, three uncommons guaranteed, and then there's two wild card slots. So the wild card um, can be a number of different things. Uh, and then got some more uncommons and then a rare. And, th and this is actually this. So this was one of the wild cards there that we kind of got upgraded to a rare. Here we got a rest in peace for enchanting tales. And then our foil is grand ball guest. And a token, night token. All right, let's see if we can get one of those. The list, question mark. So the list is a selection of cards that appear in um, some set boosters. And they're just cards that are thematically appropriate for the set. Sometimes they're really cool reprints. Sometimes they're just things that kind of fit the vibe of the set. Um, but yeah. Think of it like a little little bonus. All right, let's go. Okay, now here is an example of this basic land slot can be one of these, and it's foil even. So those can show up in set boosters. Let's do some commons here. And okay, there's another common. We hit the fourth common. Uncommons, uncommons. Totentons, it's also fun to say. Old Flitterfang. And then the rare is Tangled Colony. The Enchanting Tales is Grasp of Fate. 
And the foil is Slumbering Keep Guard. Sneaky good in Enchantress decks. So yeah, um, snuggle bunsies. If you have more questions about the what the uh, about what the list is, definitely head to that collecting um, collecting article, or you can also just look up uh, the list updates for Wilds of Eldraine. There is a separate article for that and what is on the list. Um, okay, here is an example of that signature. So that is the artist signature. It is foil stamped. And again, you can see it's got the same numbering and everything back here, but special version. Uh, let's see. All right. Basic land. Again, so this is the non foil version, so showing that you can get a variety of basic lands in that slot. And then we got some commons. So happy Sleight of Hand is back. Commons, commons, commons. We got some uncommons. Now, this uh, set boosters are not made for drafting. Now, that's not to say you couldn't do it, um, but they're not built that way. But you certainly can. We've got a Fiery Emancipation, so a rare Enchanting Tales, and then our foil, that pretty edge wall in by Elena Danner, friend of the show. Uh, I want to keep going. Oh, I want to do, I want to do pack one, pick ones, but I kind of want to open a Universes Within card as an example, but maybe we should just move on to Draft, pack one, pick one, so we can do that. All right. Basic land, commons, commons, commons. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move on to draft boosters after this, just because I really want to talk draft. Gadwick's first duel, splashy spellcaster, storyteller pixie, Lord Skitter's blessing, rare, and then we got a ground seal. That. And Monstrous Rage. So, yeah, again, to the um, earlier question about collecting Enchanted Tales, if you want, if you were to buy a box, do note that you do get an Enchanting Tales card in every set booster. So, um, if, you know, collector boosters aren't your thing, set boosters do have one in every pack as well. All right. All right, let's look at draft boosters because I want to do some pack one, pick ones. And then if we have time, we'll head back to set boosters to try to open up one of the universes within cards. Yeah, the art for this set is pretty fantastic. It's fantastic for all sets, but this one has just a very flavorful vibe going for it. All right, I have not drafted this set. I have played pre-release, but that's it. So, going in as blind as anyone. All right. But I plan on drafting it this week, now that it has released on Magic Gathering Arena. All right. Uh, we don't need token. We'll put the basic land out here for completely sake, but all right. Chanting Tales is Dragon Mantle. Horned Lock Whale is going to be hard to get away from. And we got some Monstrous Rage, Fairy Fencing. This card is another one that I've got my eye on for constructed formats, possibly even Canadian Highlander if fairies is a thing there. Let's see if I can keep everything here. Hopeless Nightmare, Armory Mice, Ginger Brute, everyone's little favorite guy, uh, Bespoke Battle Garb, Red Tooth Genealogist, Cut In, a solid removal spell. Feed the Cauldron, also a strong removal spell. Freeze in place, and Conceited Witch. Uh, I think it would be really hard to get away from Horned Lock Whale here, which is an adventure, always good. Um, it's removal, it's a 6-6 six, six with Ward 2. So I think it's Horned Lock Whale. If it wasn't, if Horned Lock Whale wasn't in the pack, or if this was pick two, I think Fairy Fencing is probably the next strongest card, um, possibly with Cut In and Feed the Cauldron as well. Um, this is obviously great in a Fairy deck, but it's serviceable in other decks. It may be that, you know, down the road we figure out that Cut In and Feed the Cauldron are better 
um, because they come with additional things, um, food or a young hero role token. So those might become more important uh, as the format goes on. But I think for now, I would defer to fairy fencing being generally the stronger card. But yeah, horn lock whale, for sure. For sure. Let's see, what is my favorite Canadian Highlander deck? Um, it is my, my kind of baby is my currently salt eye control deck. It's always been base blue black. It was Grixis, became four color, went back to, um, I'm going to do this commons first. Went back to Salt Eye. I just played an event with, I think, 30, 31 people uh, at an event in Tacoma a couple weeks ago, and I ended up in the top four and split. And I did not drop a match, so it's a strong deck. It's uh, I got to play Time Twister, plus all the cards that restrict drawing or hurt people for drawing. All right, Johan, pretty strong. Werefox Bodyguard, very strong. Spreading Seas, Mountain. All right, I think, all right, so options in this deck. I'm looking at Candy Grapple. I'm looking at the Witch's Vanity. And I'm looking at Werefox Bodyguard, I think. Johan is strong, but requires a very specific deck. Um, it's probably Witch's Vanity. It's a lot of value for two mana. You get to destroy a small creature, you get a food token, you get a wicked roll. Candy Grapple's pretty straightforward. Good removal spell. It could be Werefox Bodyguard as well, um, which is a very strong removal spell. Um, but it also, you know, it's a 2-2. Two -two. It dies to a lot of things. So I think, I'd t I think I would try the Saga at the start of the format. Could find out I'm wrong. Could find out that white's better or, or that that card doesn't die as easily as it looks like it might. Oh yeah, I got the Time Twister with Narset out. Teach people how that works. It's great. All right. Okay. Just generally speaking, um, cards with adventure are really strong in draft. One thing I'm also going to note is that, so this set introduced multicolor uh, cards with adventure. So we'll see when we get one, but they'll have an adventure that's one color and the main card is another color. Don't be shy to just play one half of those cards. There are some cards in the set that, uh, you know, there's like Prophetic Prism and, and there's stuff like that that do let you tap for any color mana. So things like Root Rider Fawn, um, those are, and you know, things that create treasure. Those are sort of purposely in the set so that you can play one half, but occasionally you can get the other half of an adventure as well. Um, and so when you see a multicolor one, just because it's multicolor, don't automatically assume that you can't play it if you're not in both colors. If it's good enough on one side, um, as just a normal spell, you can absolutely play it. Okay, now, speaking of here. So, adventure spells, these are two of the weaker, I'd say, adventure spells. Plant beans is okay. A 5-4 reach is obviously, you know, it, when you're talking about blue-green, if you're in blue-green, beanstalk worm, great card. Uh, we're not there yet. Um, and then, uh, Obira's Attendance. If you're in fairies, again, we're not there yet. So looking down here, Tanglespan Lookout um, with rolls is going to be really strong. Anytime an aura enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. So that is a straight up aura enchantress and is really strong. Um, and then Red Cap Gutter Dweller uh, creates a ton of rats, and you can sacrifice stuff at the beginning of your upkeep to get to play additional cards. This one feels like it needs the most work. It, it's got the highest ceiling and kind of 
Well, I guess it doesn't have a lower floor. Lower floor for this is just being a 2-3 three for 3. Um, I like drawing cards, so I would probably lean towards Tangle Span Lookout, but I think Red Cap Gutter Dweller is probably the stronger of the two cards. So that's where, I, that's where I'd land. Yeah, the art references in the set are great too. Okay. Let's do one more draft booster and then we'll go back to set boosters. Do, 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 do. Make sure that we've got these out. All right. Draft booster. Then we'll go, then we'll go back into the set boosters for a moment. All right. Draft booster, the last. All right. Stormkeld Prowler. Wicked Visitor into the Fey Court. Had this in my sealed deck. It was fantastic and sealed. Hard to say if five is too slow or not in draft, but uh, and the fact that the fairies can't block is um, correct for the card's power level, but also makes it harder to tap out on five. So far, I am leaning towards either Torch the Tower or Gingerbread Hunter. Um, both are removal spells. Gingerbread Hunter is a... a Less cheap, less cheap. It's more expensive to kill a creature, um, but also comes with a 5 5 attached. So, or, yeah, 5 5. Solitary Sanctuary, strong if you're in the tapping archetype, but otherwise, who knows? And then Red Tooth Vanguard, strong card. Heart Flame Duelist, that is another card I have on my uh, Canadian Highlander list of possibilities. Um, both sides are, are decent, not decent, but not great. And so together you get a lot of flexibility. And then we have a stab wound. Um, for draft though, I'm definitely taking Heart Flame Duelist. Um, for all the reasons I was thinking about taking Gingerbread Hunter with the note that um, Heart Flame Slash is better than Puny Snack. And it's fail state being a 3-1 for 2, I think, is probably... There, there's an argument for Torch the Tower just being generally cheaper. There's an argument for Into the Fake Court. You know, there may come a time where we're like, oh, Into the Fake Court is the best thing you can do at 5 man in this format. Entirely possible. Um, but right now, I would take Heart Flame Duelist. Is there going to be a World's Preview Organized Play update stream with Billy Jensen in the near future? We don't have one on our schedule before Worlds. Um, but Billy will be at Worlds talking about upcoming play stuff. So he'll, he'll be on the Worlds stream talking about stuff. Which card art is your favorite from Wilds of Eldraine? Ooh, that's tough, man. Um... You know, we were talking about before, it's, uh, I'm, no joke, it's not card art, it's the collector booster art, and it's entirely because of the, the little smiley face on the jello. Card art, card art, different question. Oh, Jesus. So, the list sometimes has things like Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. <laughs> Speaking of Canadian Highlander cards, this card is really good in Canadian Highlander, and that's the list, is sometimes you get Dina Soulseeker, and sometimes you get Minsk and Boo Timeless Heroes. Yeah, set booster card. Um, that was a cool open. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll put that. Yep, Minsk and Boo from the list. The list and be fantastic. All right, commons, commons. So we are not getting a uh, universes within card in this set, but uh, in this pack. But I think that is okay. All right. Uncommon, uncommon, uncommon. Uncommon, uncommon, uncommon. Lord Skitter for the rare. Knightly Valor for the Enchanting Tales. Curse of the Werefox for the foil. Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. In my set booster. Yeah, it's good in Legacy. It's it just Minsk and Boo is... Card is very strong. And it could be your commander. Throwing hamsters all over the place. All right. I went the other direction here. 
Um, foil dark tutelage, that's pretty sweet. That's in the foil slot, by the way. And then we got that. And then we got cruel somnophage in the rare slot. And then uncommons, uncommons, uncommons. Those are pre some pretty strong uncommons. Commons, 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 and then that. Still looking for one of those universes within cards. Just a couple minutes left. If you have any questions, feel free to show, throw them in chat. Um, in the meantime, next week, uh, so a lot of people have been asking when we're going to do our next arena stream. We have uh, Chris Kiernitz and Ian Adams coming on the stream next week to talk about arenas fifth anniversary. So if you want to talk to the arena folks, they'll be on next week. Be a good time. And it's it kind of blew my mind when they let me know that this was the fifth anniversary of arena. So I, I've been working at Wizards for nine years and um, it just, it, it's wild to me that arena has been out for five years. But here we are about to celebrate their fifth anniversary. So they're coming on next week. Uh, the week after that is going to be a little bit different in that we are pre-record, we're actually pre-recording the stream for the 19th after this show, uh, like immediately after the show. We're gonna clean up and do some filming. And um, that is gonna be all about extra life. So every year, we raise, we, Wizards of the Coast, raise money for Extra Life, uh, benefiting the children. And we're gonna talk with some people about that, about all the different ways that you can celebrate, about all the releases, uh, the cool things you can buy to, uh, or donate to, to help out Extra Life. All right, almost done here. Wino Pride product this year. Um, we do different um, fundraising SKUs every year. We, we do the um, ugh, extra life. We do extra life every year, but we try to uh, change up what sort of fundraising SKUs we do every year. So, for example, Black is Magic um, fundraised for um, girls who code. Uh, and so we try to we try to vary up which um, fundraising SKUs we do every year for um, different causes and different things. So um, we we probably will have another pride drop again at some point in time, uh, but it just wasn't on the calendar this year. Du, 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 du. Suppose I could just like. Fast forward to the list cards. Here's another ley line of anticipation, Sean. So many. So many. Oh, and a. <laughs> so those wild card slots can hold some things, because that is so that is one pack that had ley line of anticipation and a uh, anime parallel lives. That's cool. Plus the gruff triplets. I was going through and I was like, that doesn't make sense. Oh, that's why. Yeah, all right. Those are, those are cool. I'm going to put those up there. Put those up there. I'm open Minsk and Boo. Anime Parallel Lives. Just all of them. All right. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to speed run through this and see cool stuff. So Foil, Kindred Discovery, Restless Bivouac. Ooh, Foil Island. No list card. All right. All right, last one. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, Wilds of Eldraine releases globally this Friday. Uh, it also releases on Magic the Gathering Arena now. It's out there. If you want to go draft or start playing on Arena, uh, that is available to you at this very moment. You can go do that. Um, otherwise, we will be back next week with Ian Adams and Chris Kiritz talking all about Magic Gathering Arena's fifth anniversary. All right, no list card, didn't do it. Um, but thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.